Hey and welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk about the biggest mistakes that I see entrepreneurs make all the time when they're recruiting team members. Um, I'm going to be talking in particular about VAs because those are the people that I work with most. This is where my background lies. So um, I have like a wealth of experiences to fall back onto in this area. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jessica Don Eden. I've been working online as, um, as a tech EVA, I guess, for more than three years. I built my business up into an agency. So I've seen the flip side of um, being part of somebody's team and having your own team and having to kind of grow that. And now I support new online service providers getting started with their online business. So I have kind of their input as well. And I'm seeing that they're still having the exact same experiences that I used to have. Um, you may be wondering, <clears throat> if you know my videos, uh, why is Jess kind of sitting in the dark? Well, all the clouds have buggered off um, out of the whole country, it seems. And um, since that sun has been shining all day, we are literally being baked over here. So I've got the blinds down so I don't have to put the aircon on um, while I'm recording. It makes way too much noise. Um, so that's why I'm sitting in the dark a little bit. Um, so apologies about the rubbish light to me. Um, okay, with that said, let's go into the um, mistakes um, that I see people make absolutely consistently. Um, there are still situations that even after three years I sometimes run into. You would think by now Jess should know better. But some of these literally have almost no warning signs. Or if they do, that then I'd love to have a discussion with you on what they might be. But um, yeah. Okay, so mistake number one that I see entrepreneurs make all the time when they're recruiting a VA is that they only go by skills. Okay, so somebody sends a massive list of skills. Look, like, here are all the amazing things that I've done. And um, if that ticks all of the boxes um, for the work that they need completed, um, then they don't pay attention to anything else. So they don't pay attention to personality, people's life circumstances, people's values, people's culture, people's social needs, um, people's communication preferences, nothing at all matters. It's only about the entrepreneur and, um, and the list of skills that the VA comes with. So that has consequences. Whenever you hire purely based on skills, it is likely that you're going to end up with a person who you can't work with. Um, so when you're looking for a long-term engagement and somebody that's going to support your business for years to come, which is like the ideal situation for all of us, um, it's super, super, super important that you don't just go by skills because skills can be learnt. Um, when I started as a tech EVA, I knew how to do basic things in WordPress and a couple of other things. Then I became ConvertKit certified, so I knew an awful lot about ConvertKit. And then it slowly, slowly grew, but I had to invest time into my own learning and development. I didn't come with this massive list of skills to start with. Um, so... Yeah, just being impressed by skills and not asking questions about the person's life in general and who they are at the core is not going to get you very far. So an example of this is maybe from a personality perspective, you are the kind of person that tends to communicate a lot. If you are, I understand I am the same way. So I tend to send my team members um, a lovely message in the mornings to say, hey, have a great day. Let me know if you need anything. Um, and for me, I appreciate that when somebody else does that to me. However, my partner, for example, works like the exact opposite way. When he's working, he wants to lock himself in a room, shut the door, turn the phone off, and he wants nobody under the sun to interrupt his thought process. So if he comes to work for me and I'm not aware of the fact that that is how he works best and how he communicates best, I'm going to keep sending him messages and therefore I'm going to keep interrupting him. He can't get back to what he was doing. The work will take him longer. It'll be of a worse quality. And then the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to tell him off because I'm going to be like, oh, you made mistakes with that. And he'll be like, well, you kept messaging me every 10 minutes. So, you know, how am I supposed to concentrate? So if we're not paying attention to these kind of things and, and we recruit, really with personality and values and all of that stuff in mind, we're going to end up with somebody that has an impressive skill set and we can't communicate with them, we can't see eye to eye, we can't work with them, we find them annoying and within two months either they leave or we ask them to leave. So that is mistake number one. 
Mistake number two uh, kind of comes in line with uh, mistake number one. We are hiring based on the um, decision-making factor of money alone. Nothing else matters. So if you have the skill set and you charge the least amount of money out of all of the people that have applied, you got the job. Uh, that is pretty fatal because, like I said, there are so many more things to pay attention to. And I can tell you that if the difference is three bucks an hour from my experience, um, if you like the person that's going to cost you three bucks an hour more, hire them because at the end of the day, that recruitment process where you have to, for example, go onto Upwork and write an ad and then wait through all of the applications. Like every time I've posted a job, I get like 100 to 150 applications. I have to wade through all of them. Half of them are just copy and paste BS. So all of that time I'm spending on hiring, um, I would rather invest the little bit of extra money to work with the person that I am super comfortable with, um, the one that you know I click with the most. So this goes without saying, but don't hire based on money alone. Um, I would take a lot more things than that into account. Mistake number three, unrealistic expectations or extremely high expectations, but not discussing them. Okay, so the problem is not that you have high expectations. I have high expectations of everyone that comes and works with me. I don't expect that their work is flawless. I don't expect that they don't mistakes. That's BS. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has good days and bad days. But I expect certain things when it comes to people communicating things with me, um, particularly when something is happening in their personal life that could be affect affecting their work. All I want them to do is send me a message and be like, hey, Jess, like, this has happened at my house. It's like chaos here today. Like I might be slower than normal. Cool. I'll pick up some of the slack that's happening there. Like that's how you work together. You communicate. Um, however, I have worked with clients that have expectations that are way, way, way beyond anything I would ever guarantee to provide. And um, I have no interest in meeting those expectations. And I am not going to go out of my way to meet those because it doesn't fit in with how I work. So um, the problem is that every time I've run into that issue, none of those expectations were realistically communicated. So I communicated what I'm going to provide, like I'm going to reply to emails within 24 hours. We're going to get small jobs done within 48 hours and bigger things. We're going to give you an ETA dates so that you can plan on your end, blah, 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 blah. So um, I've kind of done those things from my end and the person signed the contract agreeing to all of those things um, and then send an email and expect to reply within an hour and if there's no reply they'll send an email every hour thereafter until there is a reply to 24 emails 24 hours later um and i've run into situations like that all the time like they'll say at 8 a.m hey I, I need to talk to you in the next two hours and i'm like well i have appointments booked this morning like this is my morning for appointments i can't talk to you oh well that's unacceptable so it's when you have these expectations, it's fine for you to have those expectations. I'm sure there's people out there that are going to work with you. I'm not one of them. And you need to communicate those expectations if you have them right from the beginning or pay very close attention to the expectations that the other person has for your working relationship. And then check if you are fine with those expectations, if they are enforced as boundaries. Do not assume that if somebody says, we replied to email within 24 hours, that they are going to reply way before that 24 hour mark. Like We have set times in the day where we respond to emails and anything that comes in in the meantime will get dealt with next time we open the emails. We don't have time to spend the whole day in front of the inbox constantly being interrupted in our workflow. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So... If you have super high expectations, if you expect people to reply to instant messages in the evenings in their time zone, at the weekends, if you expect them to be available for work that has to be completed within four hours, you have to communicate those expectations. Otherwise, you're going to end up with somebody that is not willing to provide. Um, I am at this stage in my journey not happy to sacrifice my evenings and weekends because I deserve to have time with the people that I love as well. Um, and not always be thinking about work. However, somebody else is possibly perfectly happy to do that because they, you know, work at the weekends or they work different time zone hours. It's fine. Um, it just doesn't mean that, it just means that we're like not made for each other. So if you have expectations, you need to communicate them. Don't hire somebody, keep those expectations inside and then blurt them out after the contract is signed, basically. That's going to be very difficult. Mistake number four, you over everything. So I've come across this so much. So I've, there is like 
it's usually the same kind of person that has the very, very unrealistic expectations, but everything is just overdone. The, the communication is over the top. You're being over monitored, you're being over criticized, you're being over asked, and nothing ever seems to be good enough to meet those super high standards. That is an extremely difficult situation for service providers to be in, um, to be held to such a high standard of expectations um, and none of them even being super, super clear. So I often find that the clients that have these super high expectations are also the one that provide no instructions at all or extremely loose instructions or almost contradictory instructions then there's also often no timeline provided and they'll go, yeah, yeah, whenever you're ready to tackle this. And then within 24 hours, there's a follow-up email that goes, is this done yet? And I'm like, well, I was kind of planning it to do it towards the end of the week because you said that you didn't really have a timeline for this and I have urgent things to do for a launch. So that's why I said I'll tackle it towards the end of the week. And they're like, well, I kind of expected to be, this to be done today. And I'm like, okay. I can't mind read. So there's then the kind of over checking in, over emailing, over asking, over tagging, over everything happening. And um, that is super, super, super frustrating. Nothing makes you resent a client more than having somebody on your case 24 seven, particularly when it's not a client that pays you to be available for 10, 15, 20 hours a week, but it's somebody that pays you for like two hours a week, five hours a month, if that or maybe even just one hour a week. Um, so overdoing things is like the fastest way to make your service provider run for the hills. Um, mistake number five. There's the opposite. It's the people that don't communicate. Yes, that happens too. So there's people that will hire a VA. You may be one of them. It's okay if you are, it's fixable that hire somebody, sign the contract, pay the money, and then don't ask them to do anything. There's no instructions, there is no un onboarding of any kind, no induction, no training, no systems. And guess what? Your VA spends no time on your work. And then the next month, the VA will send, you know, the next invoice for the next retainer. And um, they're going to be like, hey, by the way, like I sent you a few emails. Did you get any of them? And the client will reply and they'll say, hey, yes, yes, I'm just busy. I'll send you something to do next week. So I'll go ahead. I'll send the next invoice. And then there's nothing. There's no work. There's no instructions. I'm not doing anything. And then after the second month has passed as a service provider, you sit there and you're thinking, like, come on, like, why did you hire me? Did you actually need me for anything? Or was this just to like say that you have a VA? Like what happened here? So if you hire somebody, it's really important that you actually communicate with them. It is not your service provider's responsibility to find themselves work in your business. We don't have access to your accounts. We don't have access to your brain. We don't have access to your paper to-do list that you keep on your desk. We have no idea what's going on unless you communicate with us. So you need to have a plan on how you're going to use us. And that goes hand in hand with point number six. You have no idea how a VA can actually help your business. You don't forward plan. And as a result of that, you get absolutely no results from working with somebody. Um, if that happens, it's usually combined with the under communicating because if you don't have a plan for your business and if you live into the day every day, how can you work with a team if you don't even know what you're working on at 3 p.m. that day? Um, so it makes it super, super difficult for somebody to fit into your team. And then point number seven, mistake number seven, which I've just lost on my piece of paper. Oh, there. You don't build a relationship with your VA as a human. So the atmosphere is extremely strict, bossy, top-down mentality. And I can guarantee you that whenever you end up um, not building a relationship with who that person actually is at the core, but you just enforce you know, instructions and bark orders and check that things are done and tick things off lists, the person doesn't actually care about you or your business. And... I know I've talked to a lot of people about this because people are very hesitant to get to know other humans because who knows what they could do to them. Um, but that boss-like atmosphere just means that 
um, there's usually a blame culture. So when there's a mistake, nobody thinks about how to improve the, pro the processes. The VA just thinks about how to stop you from freaking out at them. And all you, you're trying to do is try and place blame and figure out who made the mistakes and then lay into them. Um, that kind of atmosphere is like in a bad job. It makes people leave um, because at the end of the day, we started our businesses because we don't want to be working in an environment like that. It's not cooperative. It doesn't encourage people to connect. It doesn't encourage people to like speak up when, when something is not right. Um, it doesn't encourage anything. It just encourages me to open my laptop, get your stuff done as quickly as possible, get out of your Asana account and never look at it again for the rest of that day because I've done my time for the day. So um, if you want my feedback, if you want my contribution, if you want me to help you with stuff, then what's super, super, super important is that you actually treat me like a human. So for, for me, like I want to know um, where my team lives. I want to know about their families. I want to know if they have siblings, if they have pets, what they like to do when they're not working what books they've read recently that were super interesting. When I send them a message in the mornings, my first message is never, um, hi, have you done this yet? My first message is, hey, I hope your day is going okay. How is whatever I last remember of our last conversation? So if their little one was sick, ask about their little one for goodness sake. Like we're humans. Um, we have to really stop treating each other like robots and just start working as equals. Um, so yeah, if you don't build a relationship with somebody from human to human first, they're not going to get emotionally attached to you. So and if they don't care about you, they're also not going to care about your business because your business gives you success and you treat them like, you know, some dirt on the floor. So um, why would they want you to have success? You know, it, it's just not going to happen. So connect as a human first and foremost. Um, and then you will see pretty great results and people will not just leave you because they, they really appreciate you for who you are. And then the last point for the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make when they're hiring a VA or working with a VA is they're hiring because somebody else told them to. That's my biggest red flag. So when I'm on a discovery call and I'm like, so, you know, what are we talking about today? How can I possibly help you in your business? And they say, oh, I don't really know. My business coach told me that they think I'm very busy and I should recruit a VA. I'm like, all right. And how do you feel about that? And then they go, well, I don't really know. I mean, I'm very busy, but, you know, um, I like to do this all myself. I like to, like, work 14 hours a day. I'm basically ending the call at that point because... That person is going to be the client that ghosts, um, that doesn't communicate, doesn't send any work and then blames you for not sending any work. Um, so that's like my biggest, biggest, biggest red flag. So if you don't understand right now why you should be hiring help in your business, please don't hire help in your business. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your money and you're wasting other people's time as well. So um, it's really, really, really important to me that the people that come to work with me know why they're hiring me. They're like, listen, Jess, I've been doing this myself for six months. Um, I can use ConvertKit. I can use Kajabi, but I hate doing it. And they're bringing out all these new features and I don't know how to use them. I have a launch coming up. I need this set up and I don't have the nerve to deal with it. Can you please do it? Perfect. You've understood the reasons why you're hiring out saying, hey, my coach says I should just pay someone to do this for me. I don't really believe that, but I'm going to do it anyways because my coach said so is not a good reason to hire somebody. Okay, look, so they were my top eight mistakes that I see people make all the time when they're recruiting or working with a VA. I'll run through them again so you've got them. So they're focused only on skills with no regard for personality, communication preferences or any of that means that there is possibly a disconnect in working styles. What's with all of this noise outside? Um, and then it just means that you're not getting really a really close connection at any results. Uh, hiring based on, on the cost alone and choosing somebody that is cheaper over the person that you actually want um, just because you're, use, you're using money as a deciding factor. That just means that in two months you're going to end up replacing them again. Uh, number three, having super unrealistic expectations and not communicating any of them before you engage the person's services. That is super annoying. We, are, we can't meet those expectations realistically. And if we don't know what they are, we sure won't be able to meet them. Point number four, over everythinging. So over communicating, over criticizing, over monitoring. So that's borderline spying. 
And that kind of stuff is a huge turn off to any service provider, particularly if I run my own business and I'm not just a contractor or a freelancer. I have my own things going on as well. Um, that is not cool. Point number five, not communicating at all and ghosting on your VA. That makes you feel so super useless and it's not a nice thing for anyone to have done to them. Point number seven, not building a relationship from human to human and just keeping this super boss-like strict atmosphere um, doesn't make for contributions from team members. Point number eight, not realizing that you do actually need help but hiring help anyways because somebody else said so. Um, those are like my biggest stumbling blocks that I've come across. Uh, let me know if you've experienced any of these as a VA and how it made you feel. Um, drop us a comment if, you've, if you're an entrepreneur and you have hired somebody for your team and you have run into these issues and particularly if you have other questions. I'm going to do some more videos on um, tips for like hiring out um, because I've done this quite a lot now. So let me know what your questions are and I will answer them and otherwise I'll see you for the next one.